Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Uh, I decided that I'm just going to have a little bit of fun with booby eyes. Uh, I'll show you a few different ways of uh, installing them and cutting them and burning them to shape, uh, doubling them up. So, one of the reasons that you'll see the booby eyes with rounded corners, this is common to all boobies, uh, certainly the European style boobies where they came from out of, out of the UK. Um, by removing the sharp edges around the, the corners of the eye, it reduces or removes the ability of the fly to spin either during the cast or during a fast retrieve. So basically what they've done is they've just taken a, a simple booby tube and there's a closed cell and open cell. Um, you'll find a lot of open cell booby tubes out there that are pre-shaped, hourglass shape, and they're fine, but realize that after a half an hour those foams, because they're open cell, water migrates between the cells and the foam eyes become waterlogged and therefore sink. So now you've lost the floatability of the pattern, which is the whole reason that they were developed in the first place. So what we can do is we can cut a tube in half and take a pair of long scissors and long shears and just cut the edges off to create that rounded corner. So this will help the pattern from spinning during the cast or during some, some retrieve styles because you certainly don't need the pattern twisting up your leader which would then reduce the ability of the leader's breaking strength. And the way we attach them, so that, that was the just cutting the eyes to shape. And I'm just going to put down a base layer on this short shanked hook. I prefer to run a short shanked bent in point on the boobies um, just to help prevent them from being inhaled as deeply. And we can also move them a little faster in the water if we do get fish inhaling them fairly deep um, so that will help prevent it. it won't eliminate it but it certainly helps prevent it so the way I do it once we've cut it to shape is I will stick my tube on a bodkin like so and just find the halfway point, go around once, twice at that halfway point, and then start to wrap my thread around the hook shank. And the boobies will almost always land on top. Once we've got that, now I can figure of eight it three times, or four times, and come up underneath. So the diff again, going back to the close and open cell foam, the difference between the open cell is water will migrate between the cells and eventually it will waterlog the tube. So you lose your lifting capacity. And the closed cell foams, when they're manufactured, uh, the chemicals are put in a vat and then they're frothed with nitrogen. And when that sets up, you have the nitrogen encapsulated in little bubbles in the foam. So that really helps additional add floatability to the foam. And because they're closed cell encapsulating the nitrogen, water does not have the ability to migrate between the cells waterlogging the pattern. So that's one way that we do it. The second way we do it, I'll just mount up another hook. Again, applying the same principles using an open cell or a closed cell foam and rounding out the corners as we, as we had mentioned. We're going to do it in a, in a little different fashion. So sometimes people have a bit of a struggle with either finger dexterity or just the ability to 
manipulate the scissors uh, to get that edge cut home on the foam and that's really just practice but there's another way of doing it we can just take a, another small piece and we'll just take our lighter and we'll round out the corners you can see that's yep careful so you don't burn it too much but that you can see is rounded out the corners quite nicely let that cool before we start our wrap if you don't, and then you'll you'll just squish the one end of the foam again. Set it halfways with the thread. Take two wraps, and then just start to spin it on. Again, that's almost set on top. Again, we'll take three to four figure of eight wraps come up underneath a couple of times three times and then tie off at the, the eye of the hook so that's the other way of doing a, a foam now if we have so the foam only has so much lifting capacity um, Again, there you can see that. So, how do you increase lifting capacity? You can run a larger foam, of course, go from six mil to a nine mil. But sometimes that will change the profile, and the fish no longer will react well to that profile. So the other way of doing it is by doubling it up. So you take six mil of foam, double it up. You have twelve mil of foam. Um, so it's sort of like the idea of how do you increase lift capacity you know you get a bigger motor bigger booster bigger rocket and that's kind of sort of where I came up with the idea on this that I developed this a few years ago some people like it some people don't but I know when I'm running it as a point fly as an indicator and I have to suspend uh, a few fairly heavy patterns then I just find this will work quite well for me so I'll just take again another cylinder and I will cut an angle 45 degrees on both ends that are matching so that we have that shape there. And what I'll do is now with the con with the cut away from the, 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 the hook itself, I'll place the foam around the hook eye right at the middle the hook eye will be jabbing right in the middle of the foam itself and now I'll take a full wrap and just hold that in place and, and pinch that down this creates a bit of a taper in the back end as well with the foam without cutting it and make sure that's centered straight up and down Pull the foam back, bring my thread in front with a couple of three turns, and then lift the foam up, and then pull the thread straight down the center of the back, or the center of the, of the tube. And, just and once I have that the way I like it, now I'll figure of eight that tube and come in front and tie off. Now I've actually, you know, I still have relatively the same dimensions for the eyes if I was just using a straight six mil, but I've doubled up the volume of material at that point. So this fly has a lot of lifting capacity. Um, and I can adjust the eyes a little bit if, you know, to bring them to shape if I like. And that is sort of the finished end of it. So I hope that helps. I hope uh, you understand a little bit why we do certain things on booby eyes. Uh, the reasons behind them. You know, the biggest thing is not to have them spin in the air because we haven't cut the corners off. Uh, we don't want them spinning in the water based on retrieve style. 
and we want lifting capacity. So this all sort of goes into the functionality of the booby tube and the booby patterns. So I hope you got something out of that. Thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day.